Hey guys, a uh, quick little uh, tidbit of information here. Uh, this guide is once again not for people uh, that are extremely fond or know of the game and everything that goes in it. Uh, it is strictly for new players or people trying to get better at the game or people that just want a quick uh, summary of the faction The Banished uh, as a whole. That's this design for the in-depth analysis guides that you guys are looking for for each individual leader are coming. Uh, they are going to be uh, extremely useful and extremely helpful for people uh, of all skill levels. Uh, but I wanted to get the UNSC and Banished uh, videos out of the way first just to give you guys a quick introduction to them. And then these next videos coming out will be for everyone uh, because they will have highest skill level uh, in-depth analysis that you guys could ever ask for. Uh, anyway guys, without further ado, enjoy the video and I'll see you guys soon. Alright guys, starting off here, before we actually get to the units themselves, what I want to do uh, is go in and show you guys the upgrades first. Now the reason for this is, if I go through all these units and I don't show you the upgrades like as we're going, uh, the problem will be we'll have to sit here and wait for the upgrades to go through as we're describing them. And I don't think you guys want to see that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go over each upgrade, then I'm going to click them all, and then we'll go over the units themselves. So, starting with your main base, we have the Shrapnel Mines for the Grunts. Uh, it is can deploy mines that damage and slow enemies. Most of you already know this, but for those that don't, uh, Grunt Mines, they cost 300 yellow. You can get them on Tech 1. As you see there by the little green box, uh, showing you what tech is required for that upgrade. Grunt Mines are good, basically versus everything where they excel early game, uh, is slowing down heroes as well as doing good amounts of damage. But damage wise, they are incredibly powerful against scout units, just like Marine Grenades. The same equivalent, uh, but a lot of people think and agree that the uh, Grunt Mine is better. Now, the next upgrade is Tech 2 for the Grunts, which is actually Pack Brother, uh, which is going to allow the Grunts to have more health, more damage, and more survivability overall. Now, the next one we're going to see, I'm going to go over to this space real quick to show you, uh, it's going to be Shrapnel Rounds for the Choppers. Now, Shrapnel Rounds for Choppers is one of those upgrades you get for couple of reasons one if you just have a lot of choppers already on the field and you want to just give them a little bit more dps or give them the ability to uh take down other scouts or just clean up infantry a lot quicker early game and you just want to give yourself that edge that is a reason to get them also shrapnel rounds will also give you the ability to detect units so choppers will now have the ability to detect now it does cost 450 yellow same as the rabbit upgrade uh, so you will have to take that into consideration into your build so that you can actually afford it. That is the only upgrade for the choppers, not including vehicle upgrades, which do actually affect your scout vehicle. So also keep that in mind. So now moving on here, as we can see, Pack Brother actually added uh, this secondary due to your grunt squad. All right, so going over to the foundry, we're going to look at Thick Hide for your Marauders. Cost 700 yellow. It does require tech three. Um, there was a time where thick hide marauders were just a lot better than pumping wraiths. That time has passed. However, just like the goss upgrade uh, with your uh, hogs, if you already have a lot of marauders and you're going into tech three, might as well get thick hide and give your standing army a great uh, amount more of HP, which is what this does. It greatly increases armor, which is you know hit points for those wondering. The next one's going to be Scorch Mortar for the Wraith, cost 850 yellow, uh, adds a targeted attack that deals damage over time, strong against ground targets, such uh, Scorch Mortar cannot target air. Um, it is worth the 850, I can say that without, without a shadow of a doubt, uh, one of the most useful upgrades in the game, uh, and makes Wraiths incredibly powerful versus their counter uh, parts, such as the... Uh, scorpion tank as well as any you know vehicle on the ground and it even allows them to take out uh, hunters and cyclops if they're bunched up with ease okay 
Moving on to our Apex, the only upgrade here for singular units is going to be the Plasma Torpedo. Now, a lot of people don't know this. For some reason, that it, it, it shocks them. Plasma Torpedo isn't just for an anti-air uh, torpedo on your Banshee. It gives your Banshee overall more damage, more health, and then of course <laughs> the uh, damage in general, or the, uh, the the plasma torpedo, which it actually does damage to air. So keep that in mind. This is not just for your banshees if you want to attack air. It's good all around. It increases health and damage and adds a plasma torpedo attack to greatly increase damage against air units. So keep that in mind when you are using banshees. Now, moving in. Uh, actually, we actually have to go to our infantry upgrades now. Uh, Dark Skies for Jump Pack Brutes is going to increase the squad size. What this does, it's going to increase everything. You're going to increase your damage. You're going to increase your health. Uh, you're going to increase the squad size overall. So you're going to do more damage even after you lose one squad member than you would normally. And then, of course, we have New Recruits, which is going to increase the squad size of your Suicide Grunts, making them, you know, do more damage, have more health, more survivability. Now, next is Beam Cannon. This one's interesting. For a while, it didn't actually increase your DPS. It was like the same. Uh, the reason you got Beam Cannon before, which is one of the same reasons you get it now, is for consistent damage, splash damage, um, and the fact that Beam simply doesn't miss like a regular Hunter shot will. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at our first unit here in depth, and in all of its glory, we have the Grunt Squad, the main core infantry unit for the Banished. Its Y ability, once you get the upgrade, is that plasma grenade that you can throw down. It sticks to the ground and waits for a unsuspecting opponent to run over it. Now, it is not cloaked, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, if a unit runs over it, it will get stunned. It will get slow. Well, not stunned. It will get slowed, and it will take a good amount of damage. You can, of course, use these Y abilities to actually directly throw it onto your opponent's units, and it will track uh, to a degree. And of course, we talked about its Tech 2 upgrade, which allows it to have this second squad member uh, inside the squad, making it a better unit overall. Now, here we go. Pack Brother actually just kicked in. Normally, the Jump Pack Brute has two squad members, but here we do have that third one, giving it a much bigger HP bar uh, than it would have normally, as well as that third Brute with that hammer. So just overall, great upgrade uh, Dark Skies is for the Banished. Now, moving in to the Ranger. Back in the day, for those that remember, Rangers actually used to only have two guys in the squad. That is no longer the case. Uh, Rangers have no direct upgrades, but they are a great unit, no doubt. Uh, they do not require an upgrade. They shred other infantry in the game. And uh, yeah, they're just an overall great anti-infantry unit. Moving now into your early game anti-infantry unit, you have the Suicide Grunt. Uh, this is actually, you know, it's a great unit for taking out bunched up core infantry and even even advanced infantry it does a great job if you can actually hit clumps a lot of people only spam rangers and whatnot once they start being able to get them but mixing in a couple of sueys even if you're already tech two or three is not a bad idea now the squad reserves upgrade or whatever it's called uh for the suicide grunt not really a ability you see very often get put into the game or uh used because i mean it's just not something you use tech three suicide grunts kind of really fall off tech three moving now into the big bad hunters look at these guys ladies and gentlemen absolute bruisers these are your anti-vehicle units man these things look gorgeous the, the, the graphics on these I, i'm gonna state this every time i do a video probably but i'm gonna tell you guys right now halo wars may have its ups and downs but the thing you gotta give it is it is a gorgeous game i mean most of you probably never noticed until this very moment the little green smoke trails that come off the uh the little geysers on their arm the the fact that they are indeed made up of worms as you can see uh in their arms and neck you can see that they are made up of individual little worms there uh, they're giant shields absolutely amazing these guys of course have that beam upgrade uh that we talked about uh and just an solid solid anti-vehicle unit throughout the entirety of the stages of the game from tier 2 all the way into super late game as long as you keep them under an engineer bubble maybe some shrouds and some other units to support great units moving now into the locust your first siege building damage type unit for the banished you get these on tech 2 now keep in mind that these are not the fastest unit they're not the 
most DPS giving, and they're also, uh, <laughs> they're kind of squishy, but where they excel is long range kiting as well as doing lots of structure damage. So mixing one or two of these in your army of counter balls, such as your hunter and rangers uh, with an engineer or something overhead, uh, it's a great way to keep your opponent on their toes. And if they don't have the required units to stop your army, you can actually push forward using the locust as a means to take out turrets and other structures. Moving now into the tier three core unit of the banished we have the wraith and now once you attack three these are what you want to be going for is the banished absolutely uh, amazing units they've really come a long way here in halo wars 2 uh, really excited for the fact that they're usable for the longest time marauders were the the king of the game there but uh, race are now in the place where they shine uh, they have that y ability that i can show you here that plasma mortar god these graphics are pretty <laughs> And as you can see there, it drops some plasma, does direct damage as soon as it hits, as well as leaves a little pool on the ground that your uh, opponent's units will take damage in uh, if they do go into that plasma. Moving now into the Marauder, your core tier 2 vehicle. Uh, they're used for, you know, same thing hogs are. However, these have the special ability that their little missile that comes out of the back Whatever it hits will actually slow down, so very good for catching quick units such as fast heroes uh, or pesky things like, you know, scouts and whatnot that you want to just be able to chase down. Moving now into the Reaver, your anti-air vehicle uh, for Halo Wars 2. Uh, this is an absolute uh, beast of a unit. Uh, recently received an upgrade to actually allow it to take half, or da half damage from the Vulture Y abilities. Its Y ability is going to be a jump that you can actually jump pretty far. And uh, while you're jumping, it's actually immune to uh, being targeted. So keep that in mind as well. Units will actually untarget a Reaver while it's in its jump animation. So very good. Get out of jail free card. And it's uh, missiles on the back there. They have extremely good range as long as you have vision. So Reaver, solid unit all around. Does have a little minigun on the front for ground targets, but not the best thing in the world. Now we move into the scout unit for the Banished, the Chopper. This is going to be the unit that you build uh, early on. If you have a Banished leader that does have a Chopper, I do suggest always building a Chopper at the start of a game. It is a great unit for uh, bullying your opponent off of key resources, as well as scouting, stealing mini bases, and the latter. Uh, almost under any circumstance, you want to build a Chopper instead of a Grunt at the start of a game. It's very rare instances where you do otherwise unless you're trying to do some sneaky sneaky things and of course we did talk about these shrapnel rounds that it does have it also has a y ability that i can't exactly show right now but once you click it it'll actually ram a target doing damage to itself but more damage to whatever it's hitting depending on the size and or tech level of that unit uh, the ram does a little bit of a stun slash slow to the unit if it's a lower level infantry unit like a marine or a grunt it'll actually knock it over so keep that in mind. Also, if you do have someone ramming your infantry, in, such as a marine or grunt, a little trick here is as soon as that chopper or whatever it is is ramming your infantry, spam the ground or anywhere, and that unit will actually get up immediately and start walking instead of taking that full animation fall uh, time to actually do anything. So keep that in mind. A little trick of the trade there. Now, moving in to our engineer. The Engineer Support Unit, one of the most utilized units in the game uh, for, you know, healing and doing... Wow, that is a lot creepier than I thought here in 4K. Wow, that is gross. <laughs> anyway, so uh, what it does, obviously, it has the ability to heal a single unit and or structure at a time. Uh, but the more interesting thing about it is it can detect stealth and then its Y ability. Uh, creating a large blue dome. Uh, over your units and structures, giving them a 40% damage resistance to everything. Keep that in mind, guys. However, the engineer bubbles do not stack, so do not stack your engineer bubbles. And I also cannot even stress enough how important it is to uh, pop that bubble during engagements. Now, moving into the one of the more complex units in the game, and probably one of the most underrated and underused units, especially uh, under the top, you know, 10 players in the game. Uh, guys, this unit right here, the Shroud, uh, it is 
a staple in the high tier banished armies. It is, I, I can't even stress it. I really cannot stress enough how good this unit is to have in your armies. Some people are finally starting to see the light with it. Uh, but for those that don't know, uh, it has the Y ability that people all know. It puts a little red bubble up that does uh, cloaks. So as you can see, the units inside of here are cloaked. And so without detect, your opponent can't see. But that is not the reason that the pros build shrouds. No, no, no. Shrouds have the ability to block a lot of different projectiles. And when I say a lot of projectiles, I'm going to give you some examples. They block forge hog shots, forge hog Y abilities. They block tank regular shots. They block wraith regular shots. They block sniper shots, stanchion sniper shots. They block certain uh, ice cream truck shots. Thank you to Metalloid for that information. It actually doesn't block all versions of the ice cream truck shot, just a few different tech versions. Um, it blocks anti-infantry turret upgrades for the UNSC. It blocks anti-vehicle turret upgrades. So when your opponent has upgraded uh, AI, or, you know, anti-turrets when they're UNSC, this will block them. Uh, it actually will suck up some reaver shots. If you have enough, they'll block wolf shots. Uh, guys, seriously, these things are phenomenal to have in your army. They, they block so, so much. Um, I, I just can't imagine not having and oh and the biggest one the biggest one they block siege they block siege turrets they block mega turret shots uh they block kodiak shots they're they're amazing guys keep these in your army and uh, they actually block some more stuff uh, as well but those are the main ones right there keep that in mind these are phenomenal units to have in your army i uh, normally like to have two to three sometimes more you can have up to five in your army uh to block a barrage of different types of shots from your opponent. So, now moving on to our next unit, it's going to be the blister back. And much to my dismay, actually, I'm looking inside of there. Look at that. Uh, much to my dismay, their their air version, not the best. I mean, it's mobile. It's a lot more mobile than the Kodiak, so I'll give it that. Um, it, it does do a little bit of damage. It does more damage in its air form than the Kodiak does in its mobile form. So we'll have to give it to that. But this is a Tech 3 unit, not a Tech 2 unit. So we'd expect it to be a little bit better on those fronts. Now, the air form is not where this shines. Ladies and gentlemen, where it shines is just like the Kodiak. You want to get it into its lockdown. Click Y on the ground. It'll lock down, open up the back, and there you go. You are now in siege form. And what this does is it allows the unit to bombard enemy locations at a range just like the Kodiak Siege turrets and Mega turrets and whatnot. Uh, it's an absolutely great unit. Un unlike the uh, Kodiak, Shrouds actually cannot fully block a blister back because of the amount of projectiles uh, that comes out of it. So great unit overall. Does massive damage to literally anything on the ground. Moving now into the core air unit for the Banished. It is, of course, the Banshee. Now this unit with its torpedo upgrade will do more damage overall, has its anti-air upgrade uh, for that plasma torpedo, and it's very fast. So this unit great against core vehicles, um, low amounts of infantry, and uh, when you get a bunch of them, they're great at sniping bases as well, as most of you, I'm sure, aware are aware of and know. Moving on now to the last unit, the Uber Duber, the Super Super, the Scarab. Needs no introduction. This is the biggest and baddest unit in the banished arsenal. Uh, it requires Tech 3, it costs 2,000, 2,000 uh, to make. Uh, it's strong against literally everything. Um, some counters for this unit. Um, would be Nightingales. You can actually smoke them and it gets really annoying as the Scarab user to have to walk in and out of the smoke. Uh, the Y ability for the Scarab is a shield, which makes it invulnerable to everything in the game. So keep that in mind. That Y ability is going to allow that Scarab to tank a lot more shots and it's actually got a pretty quick cooldown as well. So you do want to pop that shield as quickly as possible uh, during an engagement. That way, even during the engagement, if the engagement's long enough, you might be able to pop it a second time. It does also have some anti-air missiles uh, on its back, just like the Reaver. And then, of course, the main gun can actually shoot air as well. 
So the main giant plasma gun for the Scarab super unit uh, can attack every type of unit in the game. Moving on now to the structures of the Banished. Of course, you do have the main fortress base, the, your, you know, your main structure, your construction yard, if you will. You have your harvester, which gathers your, um, your blue. You can upgrade that with 200 yellow. I do suggest getting at least one of those upgraded early on. You have your foundry. This is what makes your vehicles. You have your extractor. This is what gets your yellow. I expect, you know, expect to have one or two of these in the early game. Usually two by the time you hit tech two. We have the raid camp. Uh, this allows you to uh, build your infantry units. And then, of course, we have the war council. Man, that thing's crazy. The graphics in this game are crazy. But what this allows you to do is get your fortify upgrades. It allows you to get your, your uh, hero, your super unit. Uh, it allows you to get logistics, which uh, allows you to build units faster. And uh, it allows you to get reinforcements upgrades, which allows you to have more units. And then finally, uh, uh, we have the apex. This is going to be what allows you to build your air units, such as your engineer, your banshee, the shroud, and the blister back. And yeah, there's a lot of upgrades for uh, those as well, just like your air upgrades. And yeah, that's going to be it for the structures, guys. Give you a little quick zoom in on all of these. You know, a lot of people were talking about uh, me looking at the structures and units in close up and they really like that. I am using a mod supplied to me by a man named Toothpaste. <clears throat> so big shout out to him. It allows me to zoom in and out a lot further in these uh, skirmish games to give you guys a good overview of what's going on. Anyway, interestingly enough, I do have my Chosen in the garrison. It's been keeping this AI at bay the whole time. <laughs> but anyway, guys, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, don't forget, stay tuned for my in-depth analysis leader guides uh, for our masterclass sessions, which will be coming out in the coming days. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, hit that follow button. Hit the uh, subscribe button. Like, comment, and... Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I said follow button because I stream on Twitch over at twitch.tv forward slash Yodesla. Peace.